Welcome to episode one of Rate This Wrestler. Now, it would be appropriate, or inappropriate, however you want to put it, that I'm doing Lars Sullivan, aka Mitch Bennett, for this episode one of this new series. Now, I wasn't going to do Lars Sullivan, but then I, someone suggested it, and I thought, you know, that'd be pretty fun. So, what this series is going to be, it's going to be me doing my own kind of hybrid version of technical work rate productions and how they have their top 10 awesome, top 10 neutral, top 10 sucks. It's gonna be like a hybrid of that. It's my own spin on it. It's gonna be me taking one wrestler or maybe a stable, I don't know, it, it depends episode to episode. So I'll take one wrestler and spend, I don't know, eight to 15, maybe 20 minutes, who knows, talking about that one person, just off the cuff, you know, shooting the breeze about that one person, giving my honest opinions, what they can do better, if they're still an active talent, what, you know, I associate with them, or what the community associates with them, taking you guys' input on them, so, without further ado, I'm going to start off with Mitch Bennett, so, this whole thing, Lars Sullivan, I mean, where do you begin, this guy, look, I'm not going to be too... I could easily be very scathing as far as this guy's personal history and all the stuff he's done and been involved in. That would be effortless to do. And if you want to do that down in the comments section, go right ahead. Go right at it. I'm personally not going to make some statements that you so easily could make because I'm a clean, family-friendly channel here at The Elitist. But basically, Lars Sullivan has a troubled back history, to say the least. And it significantly affects how we view him on WWE TV. And the fact that he's getting TV time and how that you know comes off. Because to me, I look at that interview segment Lars Sullivan did last night on SmackDown, which it was yet the show was yesterday as they're making this video. I look at the interview segment he did with Corey Graves, and that segment I think the best word to use is it just made me and a lot of people just uncomfortable. Like it wasn't as if it was a oh I'm uncomfortable. I want to see Lars Sullivan get beat up. It was just a get this guy off TV type thing, you know, it's one of these kind of like, here's go away heel heat, not not the heel heat you want, like a Roman Reigns, like Roman Reigns has heat where you want to see babyface beat him up, Lars Sullivan has heat where you want to see him off TV and you don't want to see him anymore, now, of course, because this is the wrestling community, you've got people who, oh, I enjoyed his mic work, I thought his work on the stick was particularly good, I think Lars Sullivan has potential in the ring, like, you have all these people in the wrestling community naturally, because it's the wrestling community, everyone sees something and everything, I swear, so people want to see Lars Sullivan going forward as this monster heel, this big dominant monster guy, and I'm thinking to myself, where the hell can they go with this? What can they possibly do with Lars Sullivan? This is a guy who, because of his last 10 to 15 years of, we'll say, history, personal history, because of all that, people immediately just associate him with well, nothing that's really positive. Everything Lars Sullivan's associated with makes you go, oh, God, uh, uh, oh, um, uh, okay. Like, that's the kind of thing you associate with Lars Sullivan. So, you take that guy, push him on TV, have him squashing people week after week, as Michael Cole calls him, the freak, the freak, every, like, five seconds, you have that guy with Michael Cole calling him the freak literally every two seconds. And it's like, what are we what are we supposed to feel when we're watching this? Has anyone asked that question? Like when we're watching Lars Sullivan with his storied back history, back history, his storied past, beating up people, squashing people, Michael Cole and Corey Graves calling him the freak every four seconds. When we're, we're watching that, what are we supposed to think? Are we supposed to enjoy that? Are we supposed to act as if we're pleased to be watching this. Like, that's the thing with Lars Sullivan. Because of his because of his past, we watch his segments and matches and go, I, I don't feel easy having this guy on telly. I don't feel easy watching this guy beating up everyone as they call him the freak. Now, Lars Sullivan's promo in that interview with Corey Graves was explaining how the freak was a name given to him when he was nine, when he was at school, and these two brothers, or this, you know, these two brothers called him the freak, and they were singing freak show, freak show, freak show, and apparently he then snapped and beat everyone up, and he was, wasn't allowed back at school forevermore. 
and now he's taking his demons from the past and using this platform known as WWE to expel his demons and make himself feel better about himself. <sighs> Lord Almighty, um, I mean, that, that's a character, I guess. Uh, okay, so I look at it this way. Now, obviously, you've got a guy with Lars Sullivan, this giant physical beast, like physically, he's just one of these guys who looks like he'd just he'd toss a truck type of thing. You've got this guy, and you give him that character, so they're playing off his past, I guess we'll say demons, even though they're self-imposed actions in pretty much all the instances, but they're taking that and using that on TV to try and make him hate it. I don't know what they're doing. I, I don't know what they're doing. I, I really don't. Like, you've got this guy who people just don't like. People don't want to see him on TV, and what are you doing? You're having him be the, the freak show, freak show, beating everyone up, making everyone feel just genuinely uncomfortable. Like, this isn't... Like, I look at a situation like, let's say, Kane. Kane is someone who, you know, big, imposing, monster, similar to Lars Sullivan, like, physically. Obviously, Kane never had the past history of personal incidents as Lars Sullivan, but someone like Kane was packaged as the, the big red machine, someone who, he's the Undertaker's brother, someone who was you know, burnt badly in a house fire, so he has this really kind of interesting character that you're actually compelled to see. And then you compare that to someone like a Lars Sullivan, and his thing is that, oh, well, he got called a freak because he was just weird, and then he did a bunch of stuff that you can't talk about on WWE TV, and now we're supposed to be kept compelled by him. Like, why? Why? So, th that's what they're trying to do with Lars Sullivan. Going forward, what do you do with this guy? I don't know. Because are you going to have Lars Sullivan versus Roman Reigns? And Lars Sullivan in the main event picture? Lord, no. You want to have Lars Sullivan? The Freak? Main event Smackdown or main event Raw? What are you doing? So, you're not going to do that. I think Lars Sullivan, at the moment, his ceiling is having Big E just squash him. I think that's what they're going to do with Lars, but... At the same time, like, who really wants to see that? Like, are you going to build up Lars Sullivan for three months, only to have Big E beat him, and then he goes back to catering? I mean, I'm sure everyone would enjoy that. I would too, but is there any point showing him now if that's all it's going to lead to? Just a, a guy for Big E to beat? Like, it's just... I don't even know, dude. So, I mean, that's just my general discussion about Lars Sullivan for now. Now I'm going to do a couple of other things. So, what I'm going to do, I tweeted out... What are your honest opinions on Lars Sullivan? Which, that's a good engagement bait type tweet. And now I'm going to read some of the opinions you guys have of Big Lars. So, for starters, we have, I think he needs to address his racist comments, his past racist comments, and work that out. I'd be willing to give him a second chance if he did so. Then we have someone saying, not as bad as people make him out to be, but characters like this don't work so well nowadays overall, and he's not good enough to be the exception either. Then... I mean, th those are some of the more kind ones. Those are some of the more forgiving members of wrestling Twitter. Some of the ones we've got here, I'm not even going to read them. T to sum it up appropriately, two words, Mitch Bennett. Like, th th this guy, th there's so much to him. Like, there's some of these tweets, freak alert, too much drama, never was really sold on him, trash. I'm willing to give him and support him another chance, but maybe not. Ill, trash creep trash trash i'm reading through these creepy dude trash boring trash trash his voice throws me off he gives me the heebie jeebies garbage trash trash freak dumpster fire trash so you get the point trash that's what you guys think of him fair enough all cool so now i'm gonna get to the i guess the rating of this guy so Lars Sullivan, I guess how I'd rate him, I'm going to do this not as a number because that's all kinds of subjective. That's always going to cause this big uproar because if you give Lars Sullivan, I don't know, let's hypothetically say I rate Lars Sullivan 5 out of 10. People are going to say, no, oh, F you, he should be negatives, oh, I hate you, blah, blah, blah. But if you give Lars Sullivan a negative, like a negative rating, you're going to have people go, Oh, give him a chance. He should be a, at least a 4 out of 10. You haven't even seen him wrestle. So, I'm going to rate him based on just what I've seen. I think Lyle Sullivan is someone who, because of his past, 
just can't succeed. It, it's, it's a past that, given the nature of social media, you can't get past. If this was 1988, where social media wasn't a thing and you could like suppress this stuff and this stuff wouldn't become known to the public then Lars Sullivan would be perfect. You can picture Lars Sullivan back in the late 80s, the early 90s as one of these larger than life monsters who mean Gene Oakland holds a mic to and he roars for 30 seconds saying some incoherent babble then he goes out and squashes some other guy. Like that's what Lars Sullivan is. Like 30 years ago, Lars Sullivan fits perfectly but the fact of the matter is it's 2020, you've got his whole yeah, everything Lars Sullivan's done in his past is public, you know, it's public knowledge, it's on the internet, and as a result, he can't really succeed because of that. So, overall, I'm saying Lars Sullivan doesn't really have a hope in hell of succeeding in WWE, and that's his own fault, that's no one's fault but himself. I think you could, you could fire him, sure, you could just have him sit in catering and take up a valuable spot on the roster. I don't know, Lars Sullivan's a bit of a lost cause. Overall, I'm going to rate him... For a letter grade, I'm gonna rate Lars Sullivan a D. Uh, whatever. Yeah, Lars Sullivan gets a D for a rating. Like, comment, sub, he's on a drill. See ya.